Welcome back to Talking Shop. We're here. This is proper 11. We're taking a look at Ephesians 2, uh, verses 11 to 22. Hope we give you some good ideas. Church polity. Church polity. <laughs> maybe That's not what you think. Maybe yeah. a church potluck or two. Yeah, yeah we'll see. But uh, in the meantime... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look. God bless your preaching. Spit out my Lord in every way Yet I'm still welcome in the yard. Uh, we are in Ephesians, okay. in Ephesians 2, 11 to 22, uh, which are keeping track, proper 11, Pentecost 9 this year. Uh, the propers always stay the same, the Pentecost ones switch around. Uh, it started in verse 11, of course, it starts with a therefore. So what's the therefore, therefore? That isn't a, a helpful break in those readings, is it? No, it's not at all. It's not at all. But you, you have to know what's in front of it to know what in the world it's talking about. It's, it's again, it's something, an argument I'd have with the guys that do the pericopes. It's like, well, have yeah. to help us out a little. Right. Even if you like, have to I guess you have to break it off somewhere. You do, but, but even if you have to reread the other part, and I guess the assumption is, and you did that one last week, but since people can't remember what they had for breakfast, you know, six right. days later, are they going to remember what right. you, what you did, even even if you preached it? Because right, they hear maybe ten percent and remember one person. And I forget what the right. statistic right. is on that. It's not. Good. It's right. not good. Exactly. Yeah, but the context is: for by grace you've been saved through faith, and right. this is not your own doing; it's the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before Him that we should walk in them. Right. So we live inside of those good works that He's given for us to do. Just thing, because as we always say, right. your neighbor needs your good works, right. your God. Right. Unless you think that you ought to start taking credit for them, <laughs> God prepared them. <laughs> yeah. In, in such a case, in, uh, in advance, yeah, for you to walk in them, mm -hmm. not for you to boast in them, not for you to take credit for them. Right. Yeah. I was. Ex we were talking about this in our Sunday Bible class. That that text specifically, and it, that part always reminds me of um, in the Old Testament where God says, "As you are walking along, mm -hmm. teach your children these things." Right the Lord your God is one, you shall love the Lord with all your heart, mind, right. soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as you can. Yeah. As, as you walk along the path, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah, which is it's not it's not reserved for special times or special circumstances. This is as you go right. along, mm -hmm. you're always walking. Right. right. But there's this recurring theme throughout Ephesians uh, that Paul keeps pointing the church in Ephesus back to everything is in Christ. Yeah understand all of this in the context of in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, you can go back to uh, verse 7. He did this so that in the coming ages he might demonstrate the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in, in Christ Jesus. Yeah, right. right? And, and, and it is by grace to have been saved through faith. Even your faith isn't of yourself. Even your faith is not your work. That is a gift from God, so that nobody can boast. And that unity in Christ then is the therefore, right? <laughs> therefore, right. Remember that at one time you Gentiles on the first two church in Ephesus would have been Gentile church uh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Right. So he makes this reference to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Right of of circumcision by circumcision became a son of the covenant. Right, right. Uh, men were circumcised on behalf of the entire group, obviously right. including women <laughs> and, and that sort of thing. So, in so every, days old, right, and everybody was made a part of the covenant through that through right. that act. Um, verse twelve. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Um, it's interesting. The Greek there is the polity of Israel, yeah. right? The, the 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 people of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope without God in the world, right? So it's it's this outside of the covenant stuff. And if you want to be a part of the covenant, you could become a not Israelite. I mean, you could be a come a follower of Yahweh, yeah, right? But right? I mean, you would still be a Gentile, right? Mm -hmm. No matter what. And there's there's you know evidence and people like that in the Bible, but the Ethiopian eunuch and, mm -hmm. and other people—they're followers of, of 
Yeah, he did something much worse to himself. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Went a little too far with the circumcision. Um, Should have sent it, him to it, the, the church <laughs> in Galatia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, right, so, so there's <clears throat> lack of hope yeah. outside of the covenant. But, right. and, and, of course, the covenant changes in Christ. What that right, looks right. Like. But now, verse 13, in Christ Jesus, and here's where he talks about, you who are once far off and been brought near, by the blood of Christ. Again, it's that passive language. Yeah. Huh. This thing has been done to you. Right. You you have been brought. Not unless you think that you can start boasting uh about how you came to Jesus. Right. In Christ Jesus, you who are once far off have been brought near. You are the passive recipient of having been brought not by your own decision, not by your own will, but by the blood of Christ. And not by the shedding of your own blood through circumcision. Right. Right. And if and has you lest you should forget that, Isaiah yeah. will remind you that all of your stuff is junk. Right. Hip menstrual rags. Right. Right. Uh first fourteen. For he, Jesus, is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing hostility. Uh gotten rid of the difference between Jew and Gentile. Yeah. Right. The, the the insiders and the outsiders, everybody in Christ is an insider at this point. Right. Yeah, you're not, you don't fall into that category of like God-fearer anymore, which is sort of what you were talking about earlier. He did. And what was the other one? Proselyte. And there's a couple categories for Gentiles that were seeking the God of Israel. Uh-huh. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, good. And and he does it, verse 15, by abolishing the law of commandments, expressed in ordinances, that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. Uh, so did he get rid of the law? I mean, the law is still in effect, right? Right. So that's not what he's saying. That's he's saying. That um, you don't earn your salvation by the law. Right, they, you're not made part of the the covenant. Uh, right, go back to uh, verse twelve. Right, foreigners to the covenants of the promise, uh, being excluded from the citizenship of Israel. Um, you don't get those things by your adherence to the law and right. regulations. Right. Well, and and he abolishes the law by fulfilling. <laughs> right. It's not yeah. that he gets rid of it. It's rather that he fulfills it on our behalf because nobody right. else could. Yeah. Not one iota shall pass away. Right. Right. Uh, and 16, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. Right. So in, mm-hmm. in, in that act of the cross, everything changes. Right. Uh, I want to take that opportunity to talk about Jesus being the second Adam. <laughs> right. All of humanity fell. In the first Adam, and it created division and everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was the seed that got planted that came to uh, harvest or came to fruit, and mm-hmm. the Tower of Babel, different languages and people being divided there. Yeah. Uh, but Jesus being the second Adam, reuniting everybody. Right. Because the problem at the Tower of Babel was that they were making a name for themselves, Mm -hmm. right? Look at how great and how awesome we are, right? Pentecost is the undoing of that, where it's not that their names are made great, but they all have this, they're all able to understand each other for the sake of the name of Christ, Yeah, that Jesus's name is being proclaimed, and that's what they're able to make great at Pentecost, right? Yeah. And so Jesus being the second Adam, that we are all in Christ, and instead of being these divided groups, we are all one group in Christ. Yeah. Not apart from Christ in any way whatsoever, but in Christ, we're all one group. Yeah. And in that group, right, verse 17, he comes and he preaches peace, whether you're far off or whether you're near. I mean, that's essentially what it says. Yeah. And, and that's not peace worldwide, right? Yeah. Except in the church, right? Which is kind of an interesting, interesting concept. He's not talking about, hey, you know, 
peace everywhere. He's talking peace among those who follow Christ. Right. Yeah, because he said Jesus says, "I have not come to bring peace, but a sword." Right. But, you know, yeah, now I, the church doesn't do a very good job of that a lot of times. Yeah. Right. We're pretty bad at it. I, I try to uh, emphasize to my people that they have greater unity at the Lord's Supper if it, than they have anywhere else. Right. And so when the Ethiopian is communing at the Lord's table, you have greater unity with these folks in other countries who might even have different political ideas from you. Yeah. You have a greater unity in Christ than you have with anything else, right? Like, right. I think often my people see their unity at, well, we all kind of look the same. We all vote the same. We're, we're all good people. or not, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, like they... They find their unity in uh, having similar voting records, right? That they in similar polity, the similar right. commonwealth kind yeah. of idea, right? That they uh, because they all have the same thoughts on how the country should be run, run. That they're all they have a unity there. And it's like, no, 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 that's not where your true unity is. Right. Yeah, your true unity is in Christ, which is why our congregations can be made up of people that have different political ideas. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you should have seen the, the heart attack that my, my uh, Bible study almost had when I mentioned moving the flags out from the chancel. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was like, I mean, because technically, do they belong there? No. no. Like, this is not some sort of public assembly that I gave right. the government's permission to do it. You know, they should be out front hanging from a flagpole. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and and it's it's now they're there because it carries over from the 30s and the 40s, yeah. especially in our, our Lutheran churches. Yeah, that uh, right. But just the the concept of it and getting them to wrap their head around the idea that we're not American Christians, right? We're Christian Americans. Yeah, right. And it's a it's a different lens. It is a different perspective. When I tell people that. Um, yeah. Yes, there is some small nuance in I'm preaching to a particular group of people, right? But part of the goal of my preaching would that would be that if the apostles heard me preaching, they'd say, "Yes, yeah. that is the Christianity that I recognize." I see. Right? If our brother, our Christian brothers and sisters around the world came and they were visiting our congregation, they'd say, "Yes." That is the Christi Christianity that I recognize. Right. Well, I can tell you, having preached in other countries like India and stuff, that's very possible. Because when you do talk about Christ, when you talk about Him crucified for them, we speak the same language, right? And, right. You know, I mean, we speak the same theology. Right. The application of the law, what these particular sinners struggle with mm -hmm. as Americans, sure, there might be some yeah. nuance there, but as a whole, big picture, that you should be able to take your preaching and, right, Christians of all generations, mm -hmm. right, throughout the centuries, yeah. in different cultures, in, same different, solution. in yeah. different contexts, <laughs> yeah. should be able to say, yes, that's what I believe. Right. You're preaching the same thing that, right, and we confess this in the creeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, your preaching shouldn't be that far off from what the church has always confessed in the creeds. Right. Well, your, your comment about the, like, if the apostles heard you preaching, that that jumps us to verse 20, really. Yeah, I mean, so, so, yeah, so let's get there, because we have a Trinitarian thing in verse 18, right? For through him, through Christ, we have access in one spirit to the Father. It's right? so all of a sudden you get this Trinitarian piece, which throws you back to Trinity Sunday, if you're kind of on that. It lines up with wearing the season of Pentecost, mm -hmm. which is the season of the church's work. Yeah. Right, and so this is the triune God at work, so then... Uh, verse 19, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, right? Yeah. This this built house of God, that oikotomos mm -hmm. uh, word in the Greek, that, that household mm -hmm. word. So all part of the same house. And then verse 20, right, as you're saying, <clears throat> built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself being that cornerstone. Cool, cool. So we're built on literally the the Old Testament, right? Built on 
the preaching of the apostles as they described what the Old Testament had done, right? Commentary on it. Yep. And then built with, with Christ as a cornerstone. Uh, actually, let's go to the end and then we can finish commenting on it. Verse 21, in whom in Christ, uh, the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Uh, and verse 22, in him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. So what do we do with it, right? How, what, do you, what, do you, what are you preaching when you're preaching this? What's your, what's your goal as you look at this text? Well, the in Christ piece is one that I, I too try to focus on, especially in Paul's epistles, because that's his, that's his main thrust for almost all of it, yeah. is the, the unity of Christ. Um, <clears throat> and I think, you could, I think you can do a lot with not even having to say too much politically, but like there are those of us in this room that have, not this room, but you're preaching the room you preach in. There are those of us in this room that have different opinions, that have different thoughts, that have different things that might seem to divide us. The way society runs, the way governments should be run. And that's actually okay. Yeah. That's okay. that's the beauty of our system yeah. in, in this country is that we can have these different ideas and all that. But the thing that binds us together is what happens here. It's what happens at this table. It's what happens in these in this word of God that's being preached uh, and heard. And it's that <clears throat> echo, right, of the far greater unity that you were talking like, about that we have. And this this unity mm -hmm. is actually eternal. Yeah. yeah. Right? This unity is going to last beyond the last day. Right. Right. Where, and, and yeah, and this unity binds us to not only Christ, but to Peter, and James, and John, and, right. and guys like Luther. And I mean, it, it, uh, right. history and whoever comes after us until Jesus himself returns again, you know, that kind right. of thing, and binds all of history together for right. us. But if your temple is the stars and stripes, right? Like yeah. kingdoms and countries have risen and fallen throughout all of history. Yeah, and they will again. Right. And so our hope isn't ultimately in the things that are going to fade. Yeah, well, our hope is ultimately in being part of this household of Christ. Yeah, what's that psalm? Some trust in chariots. Yeah, and some in uh, horses. But I, uh, I think that's actually Jeremiah, quite right. frankly. But it, it might be the psalm. Where the, we are now the house people of God. Right. We're a temple, a building built for God and consecrated for his service. Right. Yes, set apart. The, the holiness is that set apartness, right? Yeah. yeah. So then, and that's what I'm doing. If I'm preaching this as well, I'm talking about the greater unity that we have in Christ. Right. Than anything else, and it doesn't matter what your history is. It doesn't matter how good you've been. It doesn't matter how bad you've been. It doesn't. Right. None of that matters. What matters is what Christ did for you, and now what are you going to do with it? Right. We're not uh, strangers or guests anymore. We are part, part of, of the house. house. Right. We're part of the family. Yeah. Yeah, you're part of the house, and if you're part of the house, then you have a responsibility to it. Yeah. Yeah, which always makes me crazy, like when I'll do it in a member's class, I'll never see him again. <laughs> it was like, really? Yeah. And it's, you, you remember to what? You know, I mean, like it, we, you just wanted membership at a church somewhere, or, you know, that kind of thing, and that, that's that's super frustrating. Stuff like that for me, because like, you know, you said, you know, we have all these pledges and all these other things. But, so if it's so, Psalm 20, verse 7. Oh, was it Psalm 20? Cool. Very good. All right. Well, good. Anything else in here? Any other any other techniques you'd use for this? Um, I'm, I'd honestly use kind of a, a that uh, the, the format where you give two things that are wrong. Yep. And then you bring them to the right answer, you know, and, and you, you say that wrong <laughs> statement. You yep. know, how how we're Americans. Yeah. And more American Christians. I mean, you may not to use that, but that could be a potential mm -hmm. one. And but then you lean and go, well, no, actually, <laughs> the text tells us something quite different from that. It tells us how right. Christians. Or is that the is that the paradox maintained? Where? Uh, no, I don't remember what exactly I don't know. Like, what it's called. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd have to look it up. Uh, if Jesus doesn't return before now and then. The Sunday before the election, we're going to gather here and we're going to read some scripture. If we're going to confess the creed, we're going to sing some songs. We're going to receive the Lord's Supper. Yeah. 
But the Sunday after the election, we're going to gather here. We're going to read some scripture. Yeah, right. we're gonna, right? yeah. And so, like, regardless of whatever happens in the country, regardless of what is happening yeah. in the world, we're going to be here confessing Christ because right. this is where our true citizenship is. Right. 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 The New Jerusalem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Travis Ferguson. He uh, on the last election, he he shared something about like, you better go vote. And you better go confess your sins afterward because there is no good decision to make in, in this context. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We got kind of political today, but that's okay. It, it, it's it's the way we're where we're at. The yeah. word polony is, is yeah, in that's the right. It's in so <laughs> good. Tell us what you did with it. Like, subscribe, uh, stay with us here. Give us some comments. How'd you preach it? What what'd you do with this text? Uh, we hope we hope it's a blessing. We hope we get you started. And in the meantime, God bless your preaching.